guys! Today I want to talk with you about Fight or Flight, a romance novel by Samantha Young. This book was first published in 2018 and I originally picked it up to read for my vlog where I was checking out romance novels that dabble in enemies to lovers trope. However, as soon as I finished reading this novel, I knew that there are too many things that I would like to say about this book to not make this review. As per usual, we will start this video with a short synopsis, then proceed into a non-spoiler review and wrap this video up with the spoilers. If you haven't read this book yet, then do not worry, I will make sure to let you know when the spoilers begin. So, in Fight or Flight, we are following Ava and Caleb, two young, privileged, and at least from the very first glance, self-involved and short-tempered people. Due to a volcano eruption in Iceland, Ava and Caleb are forced to change their flights from direct flights to Boston to two flights with an overnight layover. Now let me point out that neither Ava nor Caleb are having a good day and these news on top of their own personal problems make them more irritable than usual. After a few unfortunate encounters at the airport, as well as after realizing that they are stuck sitting together on the plane, they're quick to dump their individual frustrations on one another. First of all, by behaving unnecessarily rude towards each other and eventually by agreeing to one night stand. However, what was supposed to be a fun way to reduce the sexual tension between the two uh, to get rid of this build-up stress and increase the levels of endorphins in their bodies ends up turning into something much more convoluted once Ava and Caleb realize that they're actually very, very compatible. Now, I have to say that there were few things that I actually uh, very much enjoyed about this book. First of all, I did enjoy a lot the writing style and the way Samantha Young decided to tell us the story. The book was very easy to read, it captured my attention from the very first chapter, and despite me not liking where the story ended up going, I still felt that I want to keep on reading it. In addition to that, I found Ava to be an interesting character to follow. Admittedly, she wasn't the very best female main character I have ever read about, but she was an overall good person. She gets along well with most of the people in her life, she's interested in the work she's doing, she's smart, loyal, and usually able to stand her ground. I enjoyed reading about Ava's backstory and I enjoyed her as a character now. I liked her much more than I liked Caleb, no doubts there. However, the best thing, the strongest storyline in my eyes in Fight or Flight is not the romance itself but the depiction of female friendship. Ava's and Harper's friendship was a breath of fresh air. These two women are each other's soulmates. I appreciated that Samantha Young didn't just told us that these ladies are best friends, but actually took the time and showed it through a series of realistic interactions. They trust one another, they support each other, and they're not afraid to tell each other difficult truths. No matter what, Ava and Harper have each other's backs. And exactly because of the reasons I just mentioned, and because I honestly enjoyed reading the first half of this book so much, I feel like the disappointment I felt after finishing the book hit me harder than it would have if I would have not enjoyed this book at all in the first place. Don't get me wrong, the first half of the book is filled with a negative connotation as well, but while reading the first half, I still had the hope that as the story will progress, these negative things will be either solved or turned around and presented to us like life lessons of what should be avoided. And I did got some life lessons from this book. Sadly though, I don't think that any of them should be actually applied in the real life. In my spoiler review, I will go into much more of a detail about these negative messages presented in this book, but before we do just that, I wanted to point out that overall, I found this book to be very hypocritical. The novel seems to be trying very hard to be feminist-friendly, uh, to preach the messages of independence, of not allowing a man to control your life, not taking shit from anyone, standing your ground. And yet, while it says a lot of the right things, it keeps on showing us the wrong ones, in this way undermining its own message. And on this note, we will proceed to the spoiler review, so I could uh, talk a little bit more about the frustrations I have with this book. If you haven't read Fight or Flight yet, but you feel like this is something you would like to read, now it's a great time for you to click off this video.
Now that we have mostly covered the positive things about this book, let's talk a little bit more about the few things that I have no idea how they ended up in a romance novel. Not a dark romance but your typical pink-tinted glasses, rainbows and butterflies type of romance novel in this day and age. So let's look together at the wonderful life lessons Fight or Fly taught me. Let's start with a simple one. Lesson number one, being treated unfairly by someone gives you a permission to treat anyone around you like trash. This particular life lesson I have learned from Caleb. If anything, Ava and Harper are great examples of how you can and you should still be kind to others despite what had happened in your life. Caleb, on the other hand, is obnoxious. He's rude to practically everyone around him. He's treating Ava awfully, which for some reason in this book is covered up by him just being brutally honest which is just stupid. You can be very honest and still find a way to say what you think without insulting those around you. Throughout the whole book, we see him running away from confrontations by ignoring Ava. He's rude and he's immature. Way too immature to be a 35-year-old man. But everything he says and everything he does is just being excused by letting us know that Caleb is just going through a lot. And according to Samantha Young, going through a lot gives you a free pass to keep on treating other people in your life like shit. Lesson number two, having someone's partial attention is better than not having them at all. Now, I know that this book is not the only one that perpetuates this idea, but I hate this mentality and I think we should stop. Ava and Caleb's casual relationship, even when they are being rude to each other in the beginning, still could have been constituted as fun all the way until Ava actually started to feel something for him. And the very first time Ava has this thought that she should be careful about what she says or what she does to not scare him off because she can't deal with the idea of not having him in her life at all, I strongly feel that at that point their casual relationship needed to end. There's nothing fun in reading about a person that puts their own self-worth in doubt and tries to convince themselves that they're happy just by having bits and pieces of someone. If you ever end up in that type of situation, then get out of it. That's not healthy. And despite what all romance novels or romantic comedies tell us, it won't get better. More likely than not, it will get worse because you can't make a person feel the way you want them to feel about you. Doesn't matter how awesome you are. Lesson number three, making decisions for your own well-being can and will turn you into a villain. So if you have read this book, uh, I'm pretty sure you know rather well what part of the book I'm talking about and what exactly I'm about to say. Villainizing women for having an abortion is not okay. First things first, let me say that I'm 100% pro-choice. That being said, when I first started reading the scene where Caleb was finally telling the truth to Ava about why he and Carrie split, I could see both Carrie and him having their own valid reasons for feeling the way uh, they were feeling or doing what they did when it came to her pregnancy. Carrie was completely, undeniably in the right to feel that she is not ready to be a mom, as well as she was 100% allowed to be worried about the physical and emotional implications this pregnancy would have on her. If anything, even women who are actively trying to get pregnant are often concerned about their health during and after their pregnancy. And in this book, we are talking about a woman who didn't even want you to be pregnant in the first place. Consequently, she was completely justified in her decision to have an abortion. At the same time, I felt that Caleb had the right to feel sad about this turn of events. While I support Carrie's right to make this decision for both of them, I can also understand Caleb grieving over the life they could have had together. And I can even see him being pissed and not wanting to have anything to do with her when she decided to lie about the way she lost the baby instead of telling him the truth. But when the push comes to shove, the abortion itself wasn't his decision to make. 
Now the whole situation went even more to the what the fuck is going on here territory when Caleb started to not only express his emotions about Carrie's pregnancy, but once he also started to insult Carrie over the decision she made. He defined Carrie as vain, cowardly and selfish for being worried about the changes pregnancy would have on her physically and mentally and for considering to employ a surrogate if they would decide to have children in the future. Vain, cowardly and selfish. And that comes from a female author in a book that was released just four years ago. Let that sink in. And then Caleb continues saying how Carrie basically owed him to carry his baby because he just lost his little brother and her choosing the abortion added to his grief. But no, Caleb is not the selfish one. Caleb is grieving, therefore Caleb needs to be understood and supported. Honestly, I just don't understand why we needed this pregnancy storyline in the first place. Because if anything, this storyline encouraged me to sympathize with Carrie and to like Caleb even less than I already did. Before this conversation, I didn't like Carrie. I mean, before this plot twist, all I knew about her was that she is a polished up gold digger that takes up lying as her pastime activity. And that information would have been more than enough to show her in a negative light. And the way Ava reacted to this information she received about Kara's abortion wasn't pretty either. Her first instinct was not to try and look at this from a fellow woman's perspective, but to wish to punish Gary for what she did. What else can I say? Ava and Caleb, truly the good guys of this book. And let's wrap all of this with my favorite lesson of this book. Lesson number four, toxic relationship is not toxic as long as it is true love. Now let's look at the facts here. First of all, Caleb is incredibly rude, closed off, standoffish and emotionally unavailable. He's only ever polite to his rich friends and I guess he's also polite towards Harper. But when you look at the bigger picture, the man is a huge asshole. He treats a flight attendant like shit, waiters like shit and he admits to treating his employees like shit. And his excuse for that is that his employees work better when he's rude to them. I can already imagine the workplace he's running, a place where the bottom line always comes before employees' mental health and emotional well-being. And maybe it bugged me more than it should have had because I also had my fair share of jobs in customer service, but it's not that difficult to be polite. Saying please and thank you only takes few seconds and not saying it doesn't make you cool or above it all. It just makes you look like an ass. For me personally, being rude to waiting staff is a big red flag and it seemed like it was a red flag for Ava as well. At least until she started to fall for Caleb and then suddenly he could do no wrong. In addition to that, Ava proving herself to Caleb is a very prominent thing that keeps on following us all through the book. Before these two even hooked up, Ava felt like she needs to prove that she is not some sort of uptight vanilla woman. No, she feels the need to assure him, a stranger, that she enjoys sex. Then Ava feels the need to prove to Caleb that she can be cool and let loose and ends up getting a pair of jeans. And yes, I know it was Harper who pitched the idea and Ava herself pointed out that she enjoys the way jeans look and feel and that she wears them for herself, but I'm not an idiot. Kayla was definitely taken into the equation here too. And then Ava feels the need to prove to Caleb that she can maintain a casual relationship without falling for him. And by the way, she had to convince him of that multiple times. He learns a little bit too much about her as a person. She needs to convince him that it doesn't mean anything. She wants for him to come to her place and stay the night. She needs to convince him that it doesn't mean anything. He gets all cold and tries to ghost her after telling her the truth about Carrie. And who is the one texting, calling and trying to get in touch again? Well, Ava, of course. Then Ava meets Caleb's brother and she suddenly needs to win his approval as well. Because apparently everyone in Caleb's family are judgmental idiots. 
Even the book itself ends with Ava being worried over meeting Caleb's family because she's afraid that they will not approve of the way she looks. And here comes the best part. Ava pitches the idea of not being so polished when she meets his family and Caleb answers with, no darling, you shouldn't have to change, you should be who you really are. He says that after spending half of the book judging Ava solemnly because of how she looks. Throughout the whole book, Ava is on a mission to prove to Caleb that she is worthy of him, while Caleb is allowed to continue to be an ass that does the bare minimum. Even worse. It's not that he doesn't even try to pull his weight in this relationship, he's actively being toxic in it. To begin with, he makes Ava feel like shit over and over again. First time they hooked up, he pretended to be asleep afterwards, even though they both knew this is just a hookup and there were zero expectations for anything more. And yet, he pretended to sleep just to avoid actually saying goodbye to Ava. He constantly criticizes the way she looks and I do not care if he apologizes for comments later on or not. These comments about how Ava is not his type and how her beauty doesn't control him or how she can either get her ass to the bedroom or leave. You can't just keep on diminishing other people's self-esteem just because you don't feel good about yourself. In addition to that, he gives nothing to Ava, yet he sees her as his property. He gets pissed off when he learns that she has a date with someone else. He can't express his emotions over this, but he does try to use sex as a punishment against her for it. Also, I have to mention the scene where Caleb started going at it without the condom and Ava pointed out that condom is indeed needed and he didn't just get frustrated over this, but actually still somewhat tried to continue having sex without the condom. What the fuck was that? Even in the end of the book, when Ava and Caleb officially get together, Caleb points out that he wants to join the Mile High Club and when Ava is not instantly on board, Caleb tells her that he can either have sex with her in the airplane's bathroom or right here on their seats. Because everything that ever happens in this book happens in accordance to Caleb's needs. To me, in this book, Caleb just felt like a cautionary tale and not an end goal. To an extent, it's even funny that Ava was so quick to worry about Harper as soon as Vince just showed his annoyance over her working a lot and yet she keeps on allowing Caleb to treat her like dirt. I guess I might have perceived the ending of this book as well as the relationship in general with a little more hope if the main reconciliation didn't happen within the last 5% of the book. Maybe if Caleb would have uh, put himself on the line mid-book and showed that he's actually trying to make this relationship work, I would have been more inclined to believe him. Because as of now, Samantha Young spent 95% of the book showing me why Caleb is bad for Ava and last two chapters or one romantic gesture just not gonna be enough to make me believe that Caleb will not go back to his unhealthy coping mechanisms as soon as they hit a rough patch. But that's just my opinion. What about yours?